Hello, this is Paul with Logix Magazine. We hope you go from self-taught beginner to automation professional. And I'm really excited to have you here today. I want to share some, some simple code that's really helpful and useful to you and get your head thinking a little bit at a higher level um, in regards to bypass buttons. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So this is an, a, a this is our factory talk view studio, and this is our, our uh, display screen that we're working on. And what we have here essentially is some push buttons, some momentary push buttons that um, we're going to use to push for a bypass, all right, to bypass the sensor. Now, why would you need to bypass the sensor? It's a very reasonable question. Let's assume that you are troubleshooting a sensor. Maybe it's broken, and you're going to run the parts, but the production team is going to hand install um, a part later on. But they want to keep the production running. They can circle back later and put the uh, clips or the parts on uh, components on the parts. They can do that later. Maybe they've uh, modified or changed the um, the engineering of the part, and they no longer need this sensor at this particular point. So there, as you can understand, there's probably several different reasons that uh, you might want to put a bypass um, on a sensor. And we're going to look at that today. We'll look at some basic, simple code. All right, so I'm sure when you're thinking about bypass, you're thinking uh, right here, this is a typical sensor rung. So here's our input for our sensor. This is our output. In this case, this is a UDT, uh, user defined data type uh, status bit. And right here we have our, our bypass. So either one of these, all right, and or, uh, statement here. So either the sensor or the bypass will energize the status bit um, for the input. Very simple. However, I want you to look at a couple of other things as well before we uh, before you just assume that that's all that you need to do in order to build a bypass uh, in your PLC routine. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to share with you my thoughts of, of how you might want to um, build a bypass into your program. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll put, put in a few instructions here. And let's... Uh, Let's go ahead and, okay, there's our push button from the HMI, right? Then we're going to need a one shot, all right? So, let's see what we got. I'll just use one shot right there. All right, and we're going to... Bypass, disable, okay. Now we're going to need a couple of branches down here. Yep, right over here. Let's get this guy right there. And we'll get another one. Oh, that's not the one I wanted. Grab the wrong one. Put that right here. All right. <clears throat> we're going to bring a latch in here and unlatch here. All right, okay. Then we'll put um, bypass active and we'll put that here. And then I think what we'll do is we will put in a um, an instruction here. Yep. <clears throat> Oh, we're doing that wrong. All right. Totally, totally. Need to put this in here. Yep. And we need to put K and we need a push button here okay so let's let's verify our 
Okay, our code. So we have a very simple rung here. And we're going to take a minute and get into this. All right. So let's download it to our emulator. And we'll go ahead and test it. Now, an important thought here is, is this. When you're building programs, it's very important that you, you understand, uh, you go deeper in the way that you think, all right? So the very first rung that I share with you is just a simple, you have the sensor that, that gives you the status bit, or you have a branch that, that gives you a status bit for a bypass button. Very simple, okay? All right, but when you think at, at a deeper level, now you have to discover, obviously, why you would have a bypass button and then the types of buttons that you would use. So in this particular case, this screen is packed. Now we could have multiple, multiple screens on here and have tons of, of, of different buttons. But what's chosen here is a momentary button so that you can, if you recall, push and let go. So it's going to be energized just for a moment. So somehow we've got to latch that button uh, closed. All right. But then we're using a one shot. So so we're going to push that button and we're going to we're going to then um, release it. So this is going to be our status. So on the first scan, this this wrong, this this instruction will uh, unlatch this bit, which will ensure that this bit is not energized, the bypass active. Um, you know what? I actually forgot a instruction um let's go ahead and put that in and that is going to be right here bypass active yes i think that's what we need to do all right we've got one other change we need to make all right we got to make that change right here so This should be a whole lot easier, but like I said, I was working on something else, and they get your head wrapped around it sometimes. Okay, and it's a lot harder to explain things to people and, and try and do things than to just do it, but I'll try and talk you through this. So, all right, so here's our here's our instructions. Very simple. Push button from the HMI, one shot, and these are our, our three branches, four branches here, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and this uh, demonstrate this so obviously again this is our first scan we're gonna go ahead and energize that we're gonna energize that one shot bam that's gonna energize put our bypass active high all right okay now um, that is going to be used in our bypass as our bypass all right so we've hit the button and we are holding this this bypass active um, as opposed to having two buttons um, or two two stage button we have a momentary button to push and let go and the way we're going to manage that I, in this example is we're going to use a one shot okay now if i hit the second hit it a second time i de-energize uh, my latch and my unlatch so now why I think this is important, it's, it's a, just a, essentially a basic one shot, but I wanted to demonstrate the application that might be new to you. And the reason you would, the reason I think that this is viable is that on your HMI, there's only so much real estate that you can, you can occupy. There's only so many buttons you can put on it. And this is an example of using a momentary button with a one shot in order to latch and seal in an active bit, all right? So that's why I wanted to share this with you. It's a very simple um, uh, set of code, but I think it's a very important set of code, uh, especially when you're thinking about all the different buttons. In this particular case, we have 4, 8, 12, 28, 29 different buttons, 30 buttons here um, that we have to accommodate for. So that's why I think this is an important piece of code to share with you today. 
All right, so if you guys have any questions, hopefully I shared something that you gained something from. Go ahead and put them down in the comments. First time here, go ahead and subscribe, uh, hit the bell, and uh, I look forward to working with you guys on the next video. Until next time, take care. Keep programming, my friends.